for that one. So more in, in a bit from now. But uh, Harsha Upadhyay is joining us now. He's Chief Investment Officer, Equity at Kotak Mutual Fund. Harsha, good morning. Uh, season's greetings from all of us here. Thank you very much for joining us. Good to speak with you as always. Uh, you know, so this is that time of the year when you look ahead and make predictions, Harsha. So <laughs> I don't know if I should ask you to go down that road, but I'm sure you've thought about how the year has panned out and how the next year may uh, look like and what could be the big sort of themes and trends. Uh, so if I could ask you to reflect on that, I mean, if you have. Go on. Good morning, Prashant. Season greetings to you and all your viewers. Uh, if you look at 2023, clearly it has panned out much better than what most people anticipated and uh, most uh, much better than what we anticipated as well. Uh, when you look at the markets now, I think uh, the, the large caps are fairly uh, priced in. If you look at mid and small caps, uh, there is a bit of overvaluation there. So to that extent, I think earnings delivery going into 2024 will be very crucial for the markets to sustain these levels or move forward from these levels. Uh, in terms of investment themes, uh, just because we are moving from uh, December calendar to Jan January, I don't think uh, there will be change in our uh, uh, approach. Uh, we still like some of the themes which are medium to long-term themes. For example, all the CapEx beneficiaries are part of our portfolio. We continue to believe that order flows and uh, investment cycle uh, uh, strength will continue to uh, dominate and, and uh, you will continue to see good growth from the entire basket. Yes, valuations need to be kept in mind, whether this theme or any other theme that we are positive on, as markets are uh, fair to full valuations in many of the areas. Uh, if you look at other themes, I would say real estate and home building is another one where we have been very positive on. Uh, and we are also positive on financial services, although the segment has not done much in the recent times. Uh, if economy has to grow at 7, 7.5%, and uh, if there has to be uh, a strength in the economy, then financials have to participate there. And uh, we clearly see this as an opportunity since uh, the short-term performance has not been so great and ownership is also not so high. Uh, we believe that uh, this could be a, a, a sector to watch out for in 2024. Apart from this, uh, we also believe there are many areas where government has been focusing on uh, uh, investments, for example, railways, defense, uh, infrastructure, etc. All of these would be uh, focus areas for us uh, in terms of our portfolio construction going forward into uh, 2024. So talking about the government themes, whether it's railway, defense, infrastructure, um, many of them have been ongoing or showing you positive momentum for nearly three years now. Uh, which ones may have run its course or the stocks may have priced in all the good news? And which amongst these, you know, PSU themes, whether it's banks, railways, defense or infrastructure, still has a lot more legs? Where will leadership emerge in this PSU theme, according to you? Uh, Rima, we don't actually differentiate based on the ownership. Uh, uh, we would rather evaluate each of the businesses and the valuation separately and take a call on those. Uh, as far as uh, uh, the areas that you mentioned are concerned, I think many of them have uh, been priced to perfection. So as I said, earnings uh, sustainability from here on will be very crucial. For example, if you're looking at defense or railways, I think the order inflows and the execution should be uh, uh, focused upon and the companies which are uh, clearly uh, ahead of the pack in terms of execution and getting more orders will be the ones who will sustain these valuations. And similarly, there are uh, several utilities which are still uh, okay in terms of uh, uh, valuations compared to, let's say, defense or railways. And uh, we, we think that uh, there is safety, uh, relative safety in terms of uh, 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 those names. Defense and railways. Harsha, hi. Season's greetings to you, Surabhi, here. I guess, you know, this is pretty much uh, the issue that uh, people are grappling with because it's uh, more of CapEx, more of PSU. That's the dominant theme in the market. And then you try and wrap your head around valuations and entry points. Uh, you know, let's talk about uh, the broader CapEx realm. I mean, whether you're talking about road contractors or, you know, EPC players or even uh, some of the capital good companies. Uh, how do you find these stocks given the run-up now? Uh, so be definitely most of these have done well in the past year, year and a half. So to that extent, I don't think you can say that our valuations are very attractive. Uh, they are priced in uh, most of the immediate upside, I would say. Uh, however, if you look at the next three to five year growth, most of these sectors and subsectors uh, will exhibit strong growth. And within those sectors, uh, the execution comes into play and uh, the companies which are good at execution without really uh, stretching their balance sheets will be the ones uh, which will uh, really do well on the stock market. So to that extent, I think uh, the uniform rally that you have seen in defense, railways, infrastructure, or any of the uh, 
uh, themes that uh, we spoke about uh, in the last few minutes is, is probably over. From here on, you need to be more stock specific. And uh, 2024, as I said, since valuations are on the higher side as you enter, the earnings delivery is going to be very crucial. And especially for these sectors, it's going to be even more uh, crucial, I would say. Arshad, uh, you know, on the flip side, we're talking, of course, uh, CapEx and Infra on one end, and that's been the big theme in 2023. On the flip side, FMCG and uh, basically, you know, Staples, the, the regular consumer, that's become almost a forgotten theme, a forgotten sector in the market. Do you see that changing in the new year at all? It could be a dark horse at this point of time. Uh, while we do not see any green shoots at the moment, uh, but over the next two, three quarters, assuming that the next monsoon doesn't disappoint, probably rural uh, recovery will take some shape. And uh, most of these uh, sectors which are closely linked to rural economy have not done well. So to that extent, uh, I would say that probably uh, sometime in the middle of next year or the later part of the next year would be the time for some of these uh, uh, sectors to be rate. Okay. Uh, any anything? Uh, you know, we by the way we'll be speaking with a chemical company, chemicals company, a little later uh, after this interaction. You know, the, I, is the, is that a sector you've looked at? It's not a very large sector, market cap wise, but uh, you've got lots of representation, different kinds, from the uh, you know bulk to the specialty. And uh, last twelve months, uh, stocks have disappointed. Uh, one can argue that multiples have not derated, but much of the disappointment is coming from earnings. Uh, so I don't know which way this will go in 2024. Many believe that, you know, PEs perhaps will get derated. Other <laughs> believes, you know, it's turned the corner. Any thoughts at all, Harsha? Uh, Prashant, clearly uh, within chemicals, uh, we like uh, specialty chemicals over uh, commodity chemicals. I think the entire segment has seen uh, 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 destocking and uh, the price, uh, price levels have come down and the margins have taken a hit. However, if you look at the medium to long term uh, growth characteristics of uh, specialty chemicals, uh, they are intact and uh, none of the managements have really cut on their uh, capex guidance. They are continuing to invest into medium to long term growth. So that gives us confidence. And also we have been seeing a little bit of stability in terms of uh, specialty chemical prices uh, in, in many segments. And if that continues, probably we have seen the worst of uh, these stocking strike cycle, and we should see a little bit of improvement into next couple of quarters in terms of uh, not only prices, but also in terms of margins. So that augurs well for uh, specialty chemicals, especially after a sideways movement of maybe four to six quarters. So to that extent, I would say the valuations have are not so uh, high. And if things turn around, I think uh, there is money to be made. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. Uh, you know, uh, just a quick uh, uh, look back at what the market is doing, and then we'll go back to uh, Harsha for more. Uh, by the way, market breadth is pretty uh, solid. Two is to one in favor of advances. Not quite two is to one, but not uh, very far away either. Uh, let's look at G shipping if we can. There was some incremental uh, news flow which came through, uh, at least started to trickle through that dire Suez problem. Uh, and uh, the consequent expectation that, uh, you know, freight rates will jump, etc. Uh, news started to come through that large global shipping liners like Maersk, etc. once again are starting to uh, send ships through the Red Sea route. Uh, so I think, you know, we don't know, we don't have confirmation whether it's really begun or will try and do that for you. But at least uh, at the margin, the news flow started to ease uh, a little bit uh, out there. Uh, other than, otherwise, I think it's, it's a, uh, the screen is not very different from what we mentioned earlier on. A uh, few other additions, Mukund Limited is up about 4, 4.5% percent. There is Surya Roshni, which is up about 5% uh, or so. Some new additions to the list of gainers that we mentioned earlier. Look at Navili Lignite. I don't think this was in the mix early on. That is NLC India. It's 8% move, 241 on NLC India. And uh, this is coming through in a very sharp way uh, right here. Harsha, you know, again, public sector, we discussed this uh, earlier. Do you think, uh, from an institutional perspective, there's going to be a fair bit of money which goes in? There are PSU funds now, uh, which, uh, you know, which, which perhaps, and maybe that is the way to go about if you want to still look at the public sector space, uh, instead of going after single stocks or trying to identify this theme, that theme, as you said, it's going to be much more stock selective. So just wanted your thoughts there. Yes, as far as we are concerned, I think we would always look at business and uh, the management and the valuations, and uh, that that uh, continues. 
Uh, within PSU pack, I would say probably the utilities, utilities is one space where valuations are still not so high. And also the growth is going to be uh, a lot more stable and, uh, and, and uh, a reasonable dividend yield in some cases as well. So overall, I think it's a decent space to be in, especially given where the valuations are for the entire market in that sense. Uh, however, uh, in terms of pure growth, I would say probably there are many other uh, 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 PSU-led areas, for example, defense, railways, uh, infrastructure, et cetera, where from a medium to long-term perspective, the growth characteristics would be much stronger uh, uh, compared to utilities. Mm. Okay, Harsha, we will leave it on that note for today. Good chatting with you as always. Thank you very much. And uh, here's wishing you uh, season's greetings once again and a happy new year in advance. Look forward to catching up with you in 2024 now.